Welcome to the Yan Gen Cook Show. In China, the rice bowl does more than just hold your dinner. It symbolizes wealth and security. In fact, in China, if you have a good, steady job, they say that you have a golden rice bowl. That means it never breaks. Now, I want to, because I'm going to show you how to do a number of rice dishes today. So the first thing I want to do is to set all the facts straight. I don't know how many of you know that rice has been popular for billions of people, more than half the world's population, for almost 6,000 years. And not only that, rice has more energy per pound than any, almost any other food. Anybody knows that? More energy. Rice has a wonderful complex carbohydrate and vitamin. And also rice is very, very low in fat and sodium. No cholesterol whatsoever. Isn't that wonderful? And not only that, each cup of rice only have less than 220 calories. And not only that, rice has 10% of the daily allowance for iron. So it's very high in iron. Not only that, rice has all eight essential amino acids. Better yet, it's only three to four cents per half a cup of serving. It's wonderful. I'm quite sure a lot of people don't know so much good thing about rice. And I've been eating rice for 225 years. <laughs> now, first of all, I want to show you how to make perfect rice because you start from cooking rice first, then from rice, you can go on to do a number of other things. You can use rice in dessert. You can use rice in rice soup. You can use rice in sausage. You can use rice in everything. Now, here, I want to show you this. This is how rice look. Can you see this? See this? This is dry. I have this in my cooking school, and I showed it to all my students because this is very, very nice. In fact, I used it for my interior design. <laughs> After you do this, I'm going to show you how easy it is. I'm going to put the rice over here. Now, I'm going to show you how easy it is to cook rice. A lot of people hesitated to use rice because they think it's a nuisance. It's difficult to cook perfect rice. And that is not true. It's actually very, very simple. You start it out with one cup of rice, and you use half a cup of water, one and a half cup of water. So one to one and a half. If you add a tiny bit of butter and salt, you can use one cup of rice to one to two thirds of a cup of water, okay? So one cup of rice to one and two thirds of a cup, or to cook rice the Chinese style, you use one cup to one and a half cup of water, okay? Now the rice you buy from Southeast Asia, you gotta wash it because it got a lot of foreign materials. <laughs> but the rice you buy in America is already added with vitamin, thiamine, and niacin. So don't wash it. If you wash it, you wash your money away, OK? <laughs> so just uh, cook with one cup of rice. We'll turn this around. We'll show everybody. We'll turn this on, one cup of rice to one and a half cup of water. You bring this to a boil over medium high heat to high heat until you see crater holes. Most of the water evaporated, okay? Which takes about 20, 15 to 18 minutes. It depends on whether you use electric or gas. And also depends on how high you turn it. But nevertheless, during this cooking process, don't stir it too much, okay? Otherwise, it might turn um, sticky because when you stir it, you break up the rice kernel. You see that? And then, when it gets to a crater hole, okay, then look at this. You see the crater hole? Then you immediately cover this up after you get to a point the crater hole. Then you cover up and turn it down to simmer and let it cook for approximately 20 minutes. Simmer, let it steam to allow the starch to gelatinize and get a nice, good gelatinization of starch. And I am going to set this aside, okay? Now, with the rice, I'm going to show you how to do a wonderful dish. This is going to be rice and lotus leaf. Now, everybody know, I'm going to set this up and get ready. 
Everybody know. Rice is very versatile, a lot more versatile than potato. Rice, people use rice for target practice during weddings. <laughs> you see, just like that. Can you imagine in weddings, you throw to the bride and the groom a potato? <laughs> that is terrible. Now, in this particular dish is very simple. First of all, I am gonna use this lotus leaf, okay? You see how this lotus leaf? I'm gonna soak this in boiling water. Kind of blanch this in boiling water and soften it up first, okay? I wanna show you a lotus leaf, see? Half moon, whole thing like this, lotus leaf. See this? And this is dry. Everybody knows that in North, in China, in the old days, there's no aluminum foil, plastic wraps, and things <laughs> like that. So they use whatever is natural to use it, to package the rice. Aside from that, they also use these bamboo leaves. You see this? Beautiful bamboo leaves. This is 5,000 years old. Now, this particular dish is very easy to do. First, you start with the rice, which I have already cooked some rice, set it aside. And then, I'm gonna cut up some sausage. One, two, three. This is Chinese pork sausage. The Chinese call lap cheng. Everybody say lap cheng, everybody. Lap cheng. Yeah, that means Chinese sausage. Okay, and then we're gonna saute this a little bit with a tiny bit of oil. This is all I need, approximately two teaspoons. Wow! And put a tiny bit of this here, one Chinese sausage. And then do a tiny bit of celery. Fun! <laughs> now, Set it aside and put it over here. Saute this and also put some dry mushroom, two to three dry mushroom, and about a quarter of a cup of ham, quarter of a cup of dry shrimp, and if you want, you can even use a tiny, tiny bit of shallot. This is optional. Shallot is very, very popular in northern part of China. And if you want to make it more unique, you can chop up some cilantro, you see? You notice that I never raise my knife higher than my knuckle. That's why I can never get hurt. It doesn't matter how excited I get. And then you stir all of these, and then put a tiny, tiny bit of sesame seed oil. This is sesame seed oil. About half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, about two tablespoons or one to two tablespoon of soy sauce. And then we'll remove these. Okay, remove these. And then put the rice in here. This is already cooked. And I want to show you how easy it is to cook this dish. After you mix them all up, because the rice is already cooked and everything is already stirred. And when it's done, you take it out. Look at this, how beautiful. I'm gonna show you this very, very simple, okay? Here, this is the lotus leaf. Shake them up a little bit. Or you can pet dry, it takes about three years. This is much more efficient. <laughs> and then, you open it up like this. Look at this, nice and round. It's nice and round. So you can put it this way, or this way, or this way. <laughs> It is all the same. The Chinese call this the lotus position. <laughs> now, when you hold on to this, let me show you how easy. You put this over here. Now, in Mexican cuisine, they use corn hoats. In Hawaiian cooking, they use tea leaf. In Greek cooking, they use grape leaf. Thank you. Somebody just remind me, great leaf. And Chinese, they use lotus leaf and also bamboo leaf. In North America, we use plastic to hold <laughs> our rice. Now let me show you. Hold on to this. Beautiful, look at this. Hold on to this. Hold on to this. 
hold on to this, you wrap it up like this, and after you do this, look at how beautiful. Now, it will stay close like this, so you do not have to use one of this done thing to stable the done thing up. <laughs> and then you put it into this bamboo steamer. Look at this beautiful bamboo steamer. And steam it, and whenever you are ready, look at this beautiful. Now I want to show you how it actually looks after it is steamed. When you open this up, Look at this beautiful. How do you like the rice? Put it in the lotus position. It's one of my favorite. It's also my mother's favorite. Rice is just like snowflake. There's no two grains look exactly the same. <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm going to show you some of the rice and rice byproduct that you have never seen before. Here, it's regular long grain rice, okay? Long grain rice are grown all over the world. But recently, also in California, we have the wonderful long grain rice. And then also, this medium grain rice, also well-known grown in California. This is the brown rice. And this is sweet rice, or they call short grain or glutinous rice. And here is the rice powder made from long grain rice. And you use this for a lot of dumplings. And this is rice powder made with glutinous sweet rice or short grain rice. And this is rice made into noodle. This is rice stick noodles. And they even use rice to make into rice sheet like this in Vietnamese cooking. They, they can fold it like an egg roll. They're very fragile. Let me show you. They're very, very brittle. You see this? It breaks very easily. So when you use it, you've got to soak it a little bit. And even, this is actually fresh rice noodle, nice and soft. This is made from long grain rice flour. And not only that, this is the, if you, when you go out to have sizzling rice soup, this is the rice crust. This is the burned rice in the bottom of the pot. And then you can also <laughs> use rice to make candy. This is a dessert, a little candy, rice puff. Of course, aside from all this, you can also use rice to make rice wine. <laughs> and also use this to make rice vinegar. You can use rice for a number of things. I'm going to save this rice wine for myself. <laughs> I'm going to put it here. The rest of the stuff, we're going to remove it and set it aside. Now, a lot of people ask me, Martin, I just want to have perfect cooked rice. If you want perfect cooked rice, just like many of the oriental household in the kitchen, they always have a rice cooker. Look at this, perfect rice cooker. All you have to do is pluck the darn thing out, put the rice in, and then you have perfect rice. So use this rice cooker if you don't want to bother. I have three of these. I sent one to my mother, and she used two of them at the same time. <laughs> the next one I want to show you is a very unique dish. I call this seafood combination rice congee. Because a lot of people said, what am I going to do if I have leftover rice? Of course, you can make fried rice or you can make rice congee. But you can also start it out with fresh, raw rice. You can use one to one and a quarter of a cup to one and a half a cup of raw cooked rice with about 12 a cup of either water or chicken broth or beef broth to cook this up. Now, the important thing is while you're cooking this, make sure you use a little wooden spoon to stir it. Okay, the idea of stirring it is make sure they would not get stuck to allow the rice to gelatinize, to cook. And not only that, you don't want the darn thing to get burned. Otherwise, you end up having stuff for your rice paper or for your <laughs> wallpaper. So make sure you do not forget to occasionally stir a little bit and use medium to medium low heat to gelatinize the cornstarch. Cook into a pot like this. Okay, I have about 13 cups of rice congee here. And the Chinese call juk. Anybody, can anybody say juk? One, two, three. Juk. <laughs> juk means Chinese rice congee. They also call porridge. They also call juk. By now, everybody know 
I am a joker. <laughs> now, I love joke because the good thing about it, you can serve in the afternoon, is so nutritious. It's just as good as a bowl of cereal because you can add anything. I'm going to show you. When this rice is done, let me turn it up a little bit. When this is done, we're going to use a quarter of a pound of scallop already marinated, quarter pound of shrimp, quarter pound of squid. You can tell this is squid. Can you see this? Ooh, if I were you, I wouldn't put this in. But since <laughs> I'm not eating anything I cook, I will put everything in. Now, I marinate it with about half a teaspoon. For the, all of these, I marinate with about half a teaspoon to three quarter teaspoon of salt. Put them all in because they don't take that long to cook. Okay, the rice congee is all done. I'm putting all this seafood combo. You can use shrimp and crab if you happen to be in a crabby mood. <laughs> you can use anything. Now, aside from that, I want to show you, we are going to show you a variety of congee that you can make. Now, first of all, let me put this aside so we're going to serve our congee in this fish bowl because it's wonderful seafood, so we'll serve in the fish bowl. Aside from the scallop, shrimp, and squid, you can also use, this is pork kidney. This is pig's stomach. I just show you for this plate. I haven't touched this for 20 years. <laughs> And this is pork liver, and this is pig skin, and this is pork bone. That means you can have a variety of congee, or rice porgy, porridge, or juk. If we go to a Chinese restaurant, you can have a great variety. Aside from this, when the congee is nice and done, I want to show you the condiment that you can put it on. Okay, look at this. You have this Chinese kua, Chinese elongated donut. Okay, we're going to cut this up and put it over here. Some parsley, some nice roasted peanut with the skin, some ginger, and some Sichuan pickle, and also a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. So these are the condiments. Also, we have some deep fried wonton skin and also cellophane noodle. So by the time I put this whole thing together, it looks marvelous. Now this is nice and done. You don't want to overcook this. When it's done, all you have to do is scoop this out. Look at this. Scoop this out. This is beautiful. I wonder how many of you have ever tried this. You go to a Chinese restaurant, you can actually order this. This is, I want to show you how to do this, okay? Let me remove these so everybody can see better. First, I want to cut a couple pieces of these Chinese cooler. One, two, three. Put it over here. See this? And then sprinkle a tiny bit of green onion. And then a little piece of parsley condiment. And also a couple pieces of peanut. Look at beautiful, huh? And then also a tiny bit of ginger. And also a tiny bit of don't worry, we're having fun. <laughs> Am I having fun or what? <laughs> and then also put a tiny, tiny bit of this right over here. Look at this. This is the, give some texture to it. Now you have something absolutely wonderful. You have a complete meal by itself. <laughs> How do you like my joke? I have this every morning for breakfast. You, of course, you can serve it in breakfast, lunch, midnight snack. I went out to the restaurant to have it 2 o'clock in the morning. Have all kind of stuff. That's why I love joke. The next one I want to show you is something everybody loves, fried rice. Everybody loves fried rice. But I'm going to show you how to do beef and tomato fried rice. Many, not too many people have tried this, but it's wonderful. All you need is four cups cook rice and about quarter of a pound to half a pound of chuck stick or any nice tender stick that you can chop it up. You can use just ground beef and one medium-sized tomato. 
The first thing I want to do is, let's do the tomato. Very, very simple. Slice this up, because I'm going to cut it into chunks. That's how I do it. One, two, three. See that? Isn't that si simple? And then I stack them all up, and I go one, two, three, four, five. And then turn them around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the knife has to be sharp, otherwise you're going to end up making tomato paste. <laughs> Put it over here. You can see how fast it is. And then I also want to show you a technique. Why I'm getting everything ready, I am going to heat up my wok. Now, first of all, let's heat this up. So get ready for fried rice. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to cut this up. First, I'm going to cut this up into strips, set it aside. Cut it up into strips, set it aside. One, two, three, four strips. Set this aside, beef, okay? And then cut into chunks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then after this, this is the Chinese food processor. <laughs> the good thing about this is not only you can achieve your objective. Also, do objective, because you're going to burn out at least two and a half million calories. <laughs> now, this is done. We'll put this back. The beef is done, and the wok is hot, and I am going to show you we are ready to cook. I'm going to set this aside. Let us add about two teaspoons of oil right here. Hard wok, okay? And then put the more aromatic ingredient, onion, brown the onion, and also chop up some green onion, okay? <laughs> Nothing to a piece of cake. Okay, and then you put it over here. This are nice, wonderful, aromatic, and just toss it around. Okay, and then you put the beef, which you can marinate for approximately one tablespoon of soy sauce and about half a teaspoon of sesame seed oil and a tiny bit of white pepper and cornstarch. Toss it around, very easy to do. Okay, and then put some egg, about two eggs. Oh, look at this. Turn the whole thing, turn the whole thing, and then put the rice. Look at this, four cups of rice, okay? Stir, then tomato, one tomato, and green peas. Then the next thing is salt, about half a teaspoon of salt, and a tiny bit of soy sauce. One tablespoon, two tablespoon, or so. That's all you need. <laughs> and then look at how beautiful this is. Can you see how nice and beautiful? And then, if you want, final touch, a tiny bit of ketchup, and also a tiny, tiny bit of sesame seed oil. This way, Beautiful. Why I'm stir frying? Now, the great thing about this is you got to stir it. It's a high energy dish. The secret is in motion. I just hope that somebody would eventually develop a wok and shake itself. <laughs> now, aside from this, I want to show you with rice, you can also do this. A mandarin orange rice mold, which you use custard and egg white, mix them all up, mix with mandarin orange, pineapple, and rice, and then you chill the darn thing for approximately five, four to five hours until they're wonderful. Look at how beautiful this looks. Look at this. And then all you have to do is one of these beautiful things, and then I have the dish right here, which 
is already done. Wow, look at this beautiful. Ooh. Tomato fried rice with the mandarin orange rice mold. See what wonderful dishes you can make. So add rice to your daily diet. You look and feel just as good as me. I've been doing this for the past 75 years. If Yan can cook, <laughs> so can you, Joy <laughs>